to my YouTube. I have got a cup of tea at the ready because the other day I put out a question to see if any CF Warriors parents or families had any questions for me, asking anything they want and the result was incredible, quite overwhelming actually. I had a lot of DMs as well about questions that they didn't feel um, they wanted to publicly put out there. Uh, one question that kept coming back, which I'm actually going to do a separate video on because there were so many people that asked this um, and they felt that their children might grow up to, to blame them for giving them cystic fibrosis. So I think because there were so many people that asked that question um, and my opinion on it and my thoughts psychologically on it, um, I'm going to do a separate piece altogether um, because it, it seems like quite a hot topic um, and, and has been for a little while actually. So I'm going to address that in a separate video. However, the other questions I've received are amazing. So let's get to it. First up, Sarah Hughes. How do you motivate a 16 year old to get fit? So this is a tricky one only because I understand that not everyone enjoys exercise like I do and like many others do with cystic fibrosis. But as we know, it's an imperative part of growing up. Whether you've got cystic fibrosis or not, I believe everyone should be more active. As a 16 year old, I remember I was always into sport and exercise, so it wasn't too tricky, but I did have friends who weren't into exercise. However, if we take exercise as a phrase, we naturally as human beings think of like the gym, out running or biking or swimming or just one of those sort of mainstream sports essentially um, to keep fit. But if we look at other things like hiking, for example, that's still exercise, getting out and going for walks, um, skateboarding, other sports and other activities that just get our lungs going, breathing in more air, breathing out more air, and ultimately our hearts racing as well, um, is gonna help. So there are so many activities. I mean, even if you just Google activities for 16 year olds, the list is endless. It's about finding something that your child enjoys because and I've always said this, if you can get your child to enjoy the activity, they'll just continue it without it becoming a chore. The problem with the CF world is that we look at exercise as medication, and that is the first downfall. So we need to sort of rephrase it to children, that exercise is fun, it's enjoyable, you do it with a family, you all have fun together, and you're all in it together. If you were to single a child out in a family of two, three kids maybe, and say you need to exercise but the others it's not so important it becomes medication and they're like well why should i do it if they're not so we need to understand the motivation behind getting a 16 year old moving and ultimately understanding what they enjoy doing because they'll do it for longer so all i'm going to say on that one is go out try a load of different things get them to try a load of different things with you and make it a team environment debbie tizard bond i hope i've said that right um how to get a nine-year-old to eat more calories and make sure he's doing physio properly. Okay, so if we exercise more, we become hungry because our bodies naturally feel like we need fuel, right? So I think the first part of that task is to get moving a little bit more. And again, going back to my previous question, if we do it as a family, we make it enjoyable so it's not seen as physio. So. The physio patting on the chest, like I had when I was a child, I stopped when I was about nine, um, maybe even earlier than that, if my memory is right. Yeah, about seven or eight maybe, um, because I was so active. I was on a trampoline all day with my, with my siblings. I was running around the field playing football, playing rugby, doing everything I possibly could because I just loved sport. I never saw physio as treatment because quite simply, I was just out enjoying it. So, if we can get children moving more naturally, they're gonna start eating more because their bodies will tell them that they're tired, they want to go for longer, therefore they need fuel. It's your body's natural reaction to fuel. If your child isn't moving much and eating a lot, there obviously obesity is becoming a big problem with CF now with the new treatment. But if your child is sedentary and not moving much, then they might not feel the need to eat too much. So it's all about, for me, movement first, and then the calories they'll naturally want to eat. And what I will stress is you have to start feeding children a healthy, balanced diet if you're not already. Because historically, the CF diet has been anything fatty, loads of sugars, loads of salts, all of this stuff. But actually, we're seeing a really bad problem with children's health and adults' health on a bad diet and 
low volume exercise. So that needs to change. Natalie, thanks. What is your daily list of meds and how has Trikafta changed your life? So I've actually done another video on this, so I'm just gonna simply link this now to another video in the description below um, for you to watch after you've watched this one. Annie Kilby. How can non-CFers help to raise awareness and support the CF community? Great question, and it's easy. Obviously, I hope you're all following CF Warriors on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and obviously me on YouTube as well. We need all the support we can get. CF Warriors is a really small charity, uh, which we founded a couple of years ago now. It is about supporting the small assisted fibrosis charities as well, because their impact is still huge. We send warrior packs out to all countries all over the world. We don't want to leave a child missed. So we absolutely need your support. So sharing our posts on social media is big. When we come around to doing events, if you can financially support, even if it's just a five pound donation, please do so, because it does make a huge, huge difference. So when you see anything in the news around CF, just share it on social media. We need everyone to know about it. Jody Goff. How can I help my five-year-old get over the fear of cough swabs and bloods? So this is where my psychology kicks in, okay? Because it's a really interesting point. So if we have a fear or phobia, majority of the time they're linked either through DNA and nature or they're learned as well. So as adults, we can pass things on to children. So even our own fears and our own phobias, sometimes without knowing. But the trick with a fear or a phobia from a psychological point of view is to understand that that fear often has come from an, a learned experience. So whether that's a negative experience, whether it was painful, whether it was a shock, whether it was just upsetting, or whether we've witnessed another family member being upset, hurt, or in pain through that same experience, and then, then we develop this fear or phobia. The interesting thing with fears and phobias is that, yes, they can be cured, unlike CF, obviously, but with cough swabs and bloods, when we work with other people, to sort of you know cure fears and phobias is that we have to actually act out that particular activity so for example a fear of cough swabs so instead of building it up and up and up in their head that oh you've got to be brave now you know come on you can do this and let's go to hospital let's sort this out and you know it's just going to be really quick it's going to be over in a flash and you know it'll be fine we need to understand that, or help them understand, that the activity itself can be enjoyable. How do we do that? We take like a cotton wool bud, for example, we play some really happy music, their favorite music, whilst we're doing it. We make it fun, enjoyable, have a laugh, have a joke with them whilst we're doing it, um, try and be as funny as possible. And then what we do is every day, we just put the, um, the cotton wool bud into the mouth, just really shallow to start off with on one day, and then the next day you go a little bit more to the back of the throat, then the next day a little bit more, but we make the activity really enjoyable, really fun, really light-hearted, and make it less about why they're doing the cough swab in the first place. So we see this a lot with children who have no fears of these things, where they get things stuck up their nose because they've put it up too far, or they've put something in the mouth and they accidentally swallowed it because they have no fear or phobia and don't understand that. So that tells us that it's learned. Okay, so that would be my advice. And the same thing with bloods, if you can get your phone out in the hospital, play some happy music, you know, make a laugh, make a bit of a funny joke, then that's gonna help with that fear and phobia. And it will take some time to develop that, but ultimately that's the best course of action when you're trying to deal with a fear or a phobia psychologically. Victoria Sargent, the best way to keep mucus off the chest. Okay, so here we go. Absolutely, the number one best way is exercise. Exercise, exercise, exercise. It doesn't matter what exercise, as long as it's high intensity, the heart, race is, the heart rate is, is going and the lungs are blowing. Therefore, the more air going in and out and force air going in and out of the lungs, it's gonna help clear the mucus. Change your camera. The battery went, I should be more prepared for these things, I know. However, next question, Angela Barber. Noah, who's four, has his friends ask him about his Creon. How did you handle this at school before you really understood what CF is? It's a great question and yet again, another common one. So at that age, I'm going to advise something that you might not have heard, but I would probably say to the teachers if they could take them to one side out of sight of the other children to take their Creon if it's a difficult subject and they're really struggling with explaining to their friends and they don't want to, they're not ready for and they don't really understand what to say. Um, 
as I grew up, though, it was pretty apparent I was really good at taking them quite secretively without anyone knowing at all, so I never really had to explain it. I did tell a bit of a story and told my friends that it was other things, um, other drugs, which I'm not advising anyone to do. I got into a lot of trouble for it, so please don't advise that ever. Um, but ultimately, you know, it's it's very easy to explain what a Creon tablet is. It just helps digest my food. My body doesn't make them like yours does, so therefore I have to take them just to digest my food, just like you do. Because then that puts them into the bracket of, oh, he's just like us, he just needs to take tablets to digest food. And we've got them in us, so it's not like an alien thing that he has to take, which we don't even have. So I think that's probably the best way to explain it at, at a young age. Hannah McHale, how did you manage the transition from primary to secondary school? I feel Noah will have to take more responsibility in September. Yeah, it's a great question. And again, I stayed in the same school, so my primary and secondary school were, were the same school. So the transition for me wasn't too difficult. But I do remember a point in time where I became a little bit more independent with my tablets. And that was a fairly young age, to be honest. Um, and again, moving on from the previous question, I was quite secretive about my tablets and things like that. But there were occasions where I missed them. You know, I did miss taking my tablets from time to time. And then I'd get really bad stomach aches. And I'd put up with the stomach aches because it was me. And I was like, well, let's not moan about it. Um, so for years and years, you know, every every week I'd get a really bad stomach ache. Sometimes not because not taking the tablets, but a lot of the time it was because I wasn't taking my tablets properly. So I learned the hard way, like really, really hard way. But I think for me personally, it's just explaining to your, ch your children that, you know, if they don't take the tablets, they're not going to be very well. And sometimes that can lead to some serious complications and i'm not suggesting you go out and use scare tactics all the time because that's that's not good but in this example of taking creon especially for digestion food it's so 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 important that they do and ultimately as they grow and they mature and their friends around them understand what cf is and understand that they're taking tablets because they need to to digest their food and, and lots of other reasons it's more acceptable and i think at that point then it's about educating the teachers just as much as the children as well that it just becomes the norm it's not alien there's nothing outside of the ordinary with this child taking tablets and ultimately a lot of kids take tablets these days for lots of different reasons so i think it's a lot more acceptable these days and easier to explain than it was when i was in school i have had so many questions and thank you so so much for all of these questions but there's so many that i can't fit them all into one video so i'm going to come back next week do some more answers for you and also work on the video around guilt for CF parents because I deal with this a lot. I feel with CF, it's uh, clearly close to my heart and, uh, and I want to help you guys as much as I possibly can. And there's a lot of sci uh, scientific evidence around the psychology, around grief and things like that. And that can lead to guilt. So I'm going to touch on that on my next video for you. But hope you've liked the video. If you have, please like it, please comment and give me some feedback on what you want to see in the future. And of course, hit the subscribe button. But for now, thank you.